Welcome to your weekly U.S. news update. This is the week of September 26, 2022. We've got five stories for you this week. The first one is the Mavic 3 Thermal and the Mavic 3 Enterprise were finally released by DJI. This is no longer rumors, this is the real thing. We'll talk about two drones in two different occasions that uh, stopped sports game this weekend. That's not a good trend. We'll talk about a flying 3D printer. This is a really interesting concept out of the UK where they want to, well, build big stuff using drones. And then we will talk about Hurricane Ian that's about to make landfall. Actually, by the time you watch this, we'll have made landfall in Florida and possibly going up into Georgia. So uh, we have some tips for you and, uh, and, and, and hopefully nobody gets hurt with that. And then the last thing is really exciting. We have not one, not two, but three new courses. And then we'll tell you a little bit about the topic. And uh, we are really, really excited about this. So let's get to it. All right, the first story this week, we've kind of been talking about this for a while and DJI finally released their Mavic 3 Enterprise and a Mavic 3 Thermal. Now I know some of you are probably sick of hearing DJI information on this channel. I don't feel so good. But uh, this is kind of a big deal because this is uh, somewhat what uh, people have been asking for for a while, which is a replacement for the Phantom 4. And uh, as much as this is not a Phantom, uh, this is a Mavic and very much like the Mavic 3, but this comes with a mechanical shutter, which is the first drone that we've seen in a very long time from DJI with a mechanical shutter, uh, which kind of makes us think that this was designed to be uh, the, the replacement for the workhorse right now, which is the, the Phantom 4 for mapping specifically and so uh, this drone, the only downside at the moment is that it's pretty expensive at $32.99. Shut up and take my money! If you're looking to do mapping, uh, the, the Phantom 4 was more in the $1,700 range. Uh, also something that's changed, uh, there are equipment available for the Enterprise, which you can put a bunch of accessories on top. But the base model at $32.99 does not come with any of these uh, pieces of equipment uh, they did in the past. So uh, that's a bit of a drawback. Uh, it is definitely an expensive drone if you're going to be doing mapping, but uh, at least we get the mechanical shutter. Uh, it still has quite a bit of good specs. So uh, I invite you to go and look at all of them. I'm not going to talk about every single thing because there was also another drone that was released, which is the Mavic 3 Thermal. Uh, it has a slightly different payload, but the rest of it looks exactly the same. Uh, this is $49.99, which I think is an amazing price for a thermal drone. It's going to be extremely competitive. Now, both of these have the available SDK. What this means is that these drones are actually going to be uh, supported in order to do mapping missions, for example, or supported by third-party software. Uh, we've actually already seen some of them. Skybrows already has support uh, for the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So uh, this is a, a big plus. The big downside to this is that it doesn't look like they're going to create the SDK for the Mavic 3 series, the basic and the Cine. I'm going to call it the basic because that's just the Mavic 3 if you want. And uh, and that's a bit of a disappointment. I think uh, a lot of people had purchased the Mavic 3 initially because it had a good camera, uh, the, the Micro Four Third sensor, and then the ability to do really good pictures. But it may not be supported by uh, the, the, the the platforms that do the mapping mission. So that's a bit too bad. Uh, all these drones have the 56X hybrid zoom on them. And then it also has a built-in beacon. I actually was able to play with them. I just came back actually a couple hours ago uh, from a trip to Oregon. I was at the LIDA conference, which is the Law Enforcement Drone Association conference and they had the two drones available there. And the beacon is basically sitting on top of it, extremely bright, sitting in the back of the drone. And you don't really have to worry about having to put other lights on it. It's gonna be compliant uh, with a three statute mile rule. And uh, there's also an SDK port on top of the drone where you can actually plug a couple things. So that's gonna be for future accessories, uh, including the 4G module dongle that's gonna go on top of the drone. So uh, both of these are compatible with the Mavic 3 batteries. So if you already have these batteries in stock, then uh, this is something that you can uh, use. The platform in itself look exactly the same. The, the drone in itself look exactly the same to the Mavic 3. Uh, it's just the top looks different with the, the new light and then the plugs and then the payload looks different. Um, it is not compatible at the moment. So that we've been told by DJI, not compatible with the RC Pro, but it has its own enterprise RC Pro version, which looks exactly the same. It's got a different software on the inside, um, which looks very much, if you've flown the, the Matrice uh, 30 or the Matrice 300, it looks very much like the Matrice 30 and 300 uh, software, just on a smaller screen. Uh, I was able to fly the, uh, 
The, the thermal version uh, was actually pretty impressed with it. You have the ability to split the screen and zoom in at the same time and do all the cool things that you can do with, uh, with these uh, thermal drones. So uh, more information, go check out uh, Drone Excel, our friend Haya over there. He's got all the specs and all the information. Next story, not a good one. Uh, unfortunately, every couple of weeks we get uh, people that are doing dumb things with drones and then it looks bad on the rest of us. But uh, this weekend, two drones were uh, seen flying over a University of Washington game and then a Seattle Seahawks game. And uh, both times they stopped the game actually. And then uh, looking for the rogue drone and, and trying to keep people safe in case uh, this was not a, a good scenario. Uh, the stadium and the police will and can find your drone. And uh, that's also, even if if it's not a DJI drone, so please be careful. A lot of these big areas are starting to use more counter UAS. Uh, we're giving these people more ammo to get more counter UAS equipment. Uh, please, please, please don't be that guy. That's just um, not a good thing. All right, next story is a flying 3D printer. This is a cool project out of the UK that plans on using multi-rotor drones in what's called additive manufacturing. And this is essentially 3D printing using drones. Uh, so large scale 3D printing, if you want to think about it this way. The goal is to be able to construct tall buildings and perform repairs to the building using drones and using the polyurethane uh, based foam. Uh, if you've ever seen, there's a, a video out there of, uh, it's not a drone, but it's, a, it's a, this machine that pours concrete into walls or creates walls out of concrete by just basically being like a big 3D printer. This would be the same idea. Instead of using concrete, it'd be using this polyurethane uh, foam. And uh, the accuracy, they say, will be as close as five millimeters, which is extremely, extremely impressive. Five millimeters is really not that big. so. Uh, uh, we'll put a link. This is a link to the BBC. Uh, again, that's a project in UK. That's actually really cool. I, I like seeing these uh, these kind of things. And the last thing is uh, a thought to all of our friends and students that are in uh, Florida and even Georgia, possibly. Uh, there's no TFR at the moment as I'm recording this. The, uh, the, the hurricane is actually making landfall uh, in the Tampa area. So uh, we have quite a few friends. We have quite a few uh, students out there, including our friend Ken uh, from Original Dobo. So we hope that uh, these guys uh, don't make it out too bad with the, the hurricane. It's always a scary thought. I've lived in Florida long enough that uh, I went through a lot of different hurricanes and uh, it's never a fun time. So we hope the damage is minimal, but remember uh, if there is damage and if there is recovery and rescue operations that are happening, please don't fly. There will be TFR, temporary flight restrictions. Uh, make sure that you check before you take out your drone and go see what's going on. Uh, make sure that you talk to the people in charge of the TFR uh, if they need help. Uh, at this stage, it's probably too late. If you've never done this before, it's very, very unlikely that the local police or the local fire is going to want to hire you or, or even have you help um, in, uh, in a free capacity even if you have your part 107, uh, they're looking for people that have experience doing this. So uh, stay out of their way and uh, try to be respectful of uh, people that have lost things. So um, especially if you're gonna be going on site, traveling from distance, remember when you get there, there might not be a whole lot of things, especially if the devastation was pretty uh, high. You don't want to be another mouth to feed. You don't wanna be another person that uh, takes away resources from the people that have been trained to do this. So uh, again, we hope that uh, everybody makes up uh, right from this and uh, we'll give you more information next week. And then the last thing this week is kind of a bit of a surprise and uh, I'm going to actually hand it out to our latest guest instructor. His name is Jared. Uh, Jared is a professional drone mapper and then he's going to give you information about our newest course. Jared, all yours. Hey guys, my name is Jared. I'm with Texas Drone Company and Greg has invited me here to help teach you all about mapping. My company in Dallas, man, we service the architectural, engineering, surveying, construction, mining. We serve all these industries and the one thing that we focus on is maps. As a matter of fact, we fly hundreds of maps every month and I'm here to help bring and unlock that magic for you and help you understand that process from the beginning all the way through to the deliverables to your clients. First, we're gonna talk about basic mapping. How do we even just get a map and get a deliverable? Then we'll go into ground control points, we're gonna learn about GPS and how the system works. And then we're gonna open the door to modeling and showing how we can create digital twins of the physical world. We're gonna talk about corridor mapping, terrain following, and we're gonna get into some more advanced topics as well. Check out the link below, get ready, buckle up, you're gonna learn a whole lot. Mm -hmm.